The Republican obsession with falsifying our nation's history continues. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying it's the GOP that has an obsession with falsifying history. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This entire story is about the dishonesty in revisionist history that's coming from the creator of the 1619 Project. An effort to rewrite American history in favor of a Marxist-derived movement to destroy American capitalism and replace it with communism. You'll notice at no point during this hag's ranting does she back up anything she's saying and in fact does her best to dismiss all legitimate criticisms as mean, racist, white Republicans whining. With nearly a dozen states, including GOP-backed, introducing GOP-backed bills that would ban schools from teaching critical race theory, a decades-old academic concept that examines systemic racism. It's the latest issue conservatives are fixated on. First of all, it's not a concept. It's an unsubstantiated conspiracy theory that seeks to divide up everyone by race and align everybody against white people. Seriously, this stuff reads like a typical anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, except for whites are the target. As with Antifa or, or democracy, they don't seem to understand what it is. Oh, right, right. Democracy is one party rule propped up by a party state media complex from a far left Marxist cult that wants to replace capitalism with communism. Democracy is lashing out at people, raising completely legitimate questions about the sudden implementation of a fringe conspiracy concept. Democracy is four years of trying to undo a democratic election because you can't accept the results, but it's only legitimate if Democrats do it. Now this war against a clear-eyed, factual understanding of our history, which is all critical race theory is, it's a war against our press freedoms too. From the 1619 Project, a New York Times Magazine project that situates slavery and race at the center of this nation's history and narrative where, frankly, it has always belonged. It's a project that conservatives despise, calling it propaganda because it dares to address slavery. Well, to me, she seems like a snake oil selling huckster, and you'll see why here in a few moments, but first, give me just 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer for my viewers. Collagen product sales are spiking, and for a good reason. Collagen is revered for giving skin its strength and elasticity, along with its power to reduce wrinkles. If you want a more youthful appearance, you should regularly take collagen supplements, but there's a problem. This is why I love collagen. Not just regular collagen though, multi-collagen. What is multi-collagen? It's a solution for aging that America is going crazy for. Within days of trying multi-collagen, users report noticing a more youthful appearance, decreased wrinkles, thicker hair, healthier nails, and pain-free joints. I highly recommend healthwithdronetech.com. Try it out now for 51% off by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com or by visiting the links in the description or pinned comment. Because this red hot vitriol for her and her work, Hannah Jones, was denied a tenured position at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. No, it's propaganda because it's a political revision of history using falsehoods, lack of context, and just outright lies. She's not a journalist. She's never been to journalism school. What she has done is lots of political activism with far left propaganda publications, which as we know is all you need for journalism now, which only exists to prop up the Democratic Party's power and discredit their opponents. The 1619 Project means different things to different people. For some, including myself, it's a phenomenal piece of journalism challenging us to reframe U.S. history by centering the legacy of black Americans, starting with the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in 1619. I'm just going to stop that right here before she goes any further because the first African slaves did not arrive in America in 1619. For one, African slavery had been going on for a long time before America was even settled. In South America, for example. In 1616, Spanish colonies enslaved Africans going back to the mid to late 1500s. There was even a slave rebellion in 1526. The suggestion that African slavery started in America on 1619 is purely a way to frame it as a white project, which it clearly was not. It's absurd. Add to it that the reason she wouldn't get tenure is because some conservatives are offended 
about the way that she's doing journalism and history because she won't do the sing-song, rose-colored glasses, America's perfect, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue BS. I really cannot stand this harpy. Everything that comes out of her mouth is BS. I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure I'm not alone in this. I learned about all of America's dark history. In fact, I say that I and everyone else have been browbeaten with it from the moment that we were conscious enough to take it all in. It's always taught that America's original sin is slavery without nearly as much emphasis on the fact that Americans also ended it while it was still going on around the world and in places like South America. And in fact, it's still going on to this day. Her characterization is a total straw man that lacks any substantiation. And let me just say, many credible people have come out against the 1619 Project and raised questions and have criticized it. But of course, they all get smacked down or ignored. In some cases, the fact checkers did speak up and were just ignored by the publication, only to see them quietly revise the piece six months later. All right, folks, that's all I have for this one. I do want to encourage all of you out there who are fighting CRT in your schools to keep up the good fight. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.